What's up, beautiful people? It's Mike James, and I'm back again with another episode of Black Business Booming. I'm so excited. Thank you to all of you who have been tuning in and watching and sharing. Um, as always, I encourage you to like, subscribe, share, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, you know, suggest someone that you want to be interviewed, a black business that's doing some amazing things. Uh, once again, I have another illustrious guest that I'm so excited about. Uh, I I've been telling, just bragging to people about how all of these have been people I know or someone in my circle. And so I'm so excited for my guest today. I want to give this opportunity to let you introduce yourself, tell the people who you are. Well, hello. That was that was a lot. <laughs> my name is Jackie <laughs> Jones. Um, I own One Degree Marketing. Uh, it's based here in Birmingham. And uh, other than that, that's really it. That's about the extent of me. I'm not that deep. I'm somebody's mother um, and I'm somebody's wife. There you go. That's awesome. It. I love it. Um, I, I just, yeah. For people who know you, they know. If you know what's what's the acronym? If you know, you know. <laughs> if you so, know, you know. I, I mean, know. I love it. I love it. So your business again is one degree marketing, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, tell everybody, just tell us when did you start your business, and you know, you know, when did you start it, and how? What inspired you to do so? This could be a lengthy story, so I'll okay. try to make it short and cute. Um, so I started my business legally in 2013. So we are a little bit over seven years old. Um, the journey to starting it legally was one very interesting. So what some people in Birmingham especially know about me is that for a while I was a professional songwriter. And so I kind of transitioned. And at some point I used to perform and sing and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I'll put that down real quick. But Coming out of that space, um, I had a lot of just musician friends who were getting endorsement deals, who were all very young in the industry at that time. And so I had a marketing degree from Alabama. Um, and so we would kind of work together to figure out how that could work out. So I kind of started to do the work of marketing a little, still heavy into just performing and doing some background singing. And then I got into the songwriting thing. Well, during the songwriting years, one of the things that, you know, the question I would get is, oh, don't you want to be an artist? And the answer was always a strong no. <laughs> um, I have no problem not being in the spotlight, contrary to popular belief. Um, I actually prefer to be the storyteller part of it. And so I took that kind of love of telling people's story, of listening to what they had to say, and then giving that out to the world in something that's consumable. That's essentially what you do in songwriting. And so as I started to think about, okay, at some point, I don't want to have to travel as much. I don't want to be as tired as I had been. I don't want to be up all times at night in all cities and whatever. I need to kind of settle in somewhere. So I started to kind of transition that from songwriting for artists to marketing for businesses, um, which essentially, again, is kind of the same, same thing. It gives me the same feeling. So it transitioned into that. And so I was like, oh, okay, let's make this legal. And so I did that in 2013. Um, and here we are. That's awesome. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing, almost like art, like a, that perfect painting when something just flows, like what you were doing just flows right into the career that you have now. And that's awesome. And like you said, even when you were explaining it, and when you were explaining it, I was thinking, wow, that is kind of similar. You know, you are, you're telling that story, you know, you're almost putting the ink on that paper for people when you're in marketing. So that's awesome. And congrats. I mean, because seven years, that's fastly approaching the way time flies. That's fastly approaching 10 years. Wait, so. though. <laughs> wait, 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 though. I always tell people I've been legally in business seven years. I've only been doing it well for three. Right. So let's let's not confuse the two. I've, I've had this for a long time, but I have not been living on it and like employing other people and that kind of thing that whole time. Right. And I think that's kind of a misconception of people. Like, oh, seven years. I'm like, thank you. I've only been doing well for three. Um, so just want to put that out there for anybody who's right. like, I want to be in business for seven years one day. I want you to. But please know they're not all like fun and games. And so. that's why that's why I think you're an awesome resource. Right. Because for one, you're always going to keep it real. And it's that part of it. Right. It's that I think it's still beautiful with the seven years because it's that that journey in totality. It's like, okay, yeah. first of all, sit down. Let me tell you the real, <laughs> you know, uh, here's the tea. <laughs> it's right. 2013. But so even to say that that's what's, that's, that's awesome. Um, so and getting started, if you were to go back to those, 
whether it be 2013 or whether it be 2016, 2017, when you really kind of just stood on what you were doing, what was one of the most what was one of the most challenging things about starting the business or getting into entrepreneurship, especially changing from, uh, you know, the writing and music world into doing what you do now? What was one of the biggest challenges? You know, believe it or not, I kind of had the same challenge in songwriting life as I did in entrepreneur life, which songwriting is essentially entrepreneurship as well. Um, but it's really that non-belief of the rest of the world around mm. you that entrepreneurship is a real thing, right? Um, I can still remember when I like first like quit my, what was then only part-time, but at some point had been full-time job. And I can remember like people around me going, oh, well, you're not doing anything all day. And I'm like, uh, actually, <laughs> <laughs> actually I have far less time, you know, because when you're going to someone else's, you know, job or you're clocking in or you're working for someone, you get to leave all of that there most of the time you get to clock out leave it there it's not it's not a thing you have a set schedule your desk is there your computer's there your procedures are there everything is there for you and it's the complete opposite in entrepreneurship you have to build those procedures you have to build that space you have to have those resources for yourself and other people can't always see that that requires a lot of you and so one of my biggest challenges really in both spaces was kind of having other people, and I mean like family, you know, friends, people who believe in you, ish, right? <laughs> right? And I say ish because they're like, oh, that's so great. You got like a side hustle. And as long as it's a side hustle, it's like, go girl, I see yep. you. I see you, girl. Right. But then when it's like, I'm going to quit my job, they're like, whoa, okay, that's cute. But, but how are you going to pay the bills, right? And so just trying to navigate the mental space of that and trying to find in myself the validation and belief that that was the point where I had to kind of drop. Okay. You can't depend on other people to encourage you. This is not going to always be easy for you. So you have to find it in yourself to say, well, I'm just going to keep going regardless. And for me as a person who has grown up, I'm an only child, my mother's only child, rather shout out to my sisters. I don't want them like coming for me, um, <laughs> but I'm my mother's only child. And so I'm used to somebody being in my corner all the time saying, go, you can do it. But it came down to, my mother is of the generation of you find a good job, you retire from that job. And so she had a hard time kind of figuring out how to support me in this space. And it's taken her, you know, as much time as it's taken me to stand on my own two feet for her to find her voice and being a cheerleader for me. And that was challenging at first um, because you're already up against the odds. You're already like, I don't know what to do with my accountant. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what I'm doing here, you know, fully. But to feel like you don't really have someone to lean on to say, hey, I really need some help. And they're like, oh, but you don't do anything all day. You're like, yeah, thank, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm stressed out, but I appreciate it. And right. so it's, it's a little difficult. And so I'm always glad to see a lot of the communities of entrepreneurs that, you know, exist now that wasn't necessarily around as I began to think about it. And let me not say it was around because that's probably not true. I was not aware of them. Right. Um, I was not a part of that network in those communities when I first started. And so I didn't see, you know, these kind of Facebook groups and email lists and networking opportunities where there are people who are a lot like me who had the same struggles. But even with that, once I found them, they don't always talk about said struggles. Mm -hmm. And so it was just, it was a challenge to find the confidence and to find the self-validation that it requires to kind of keep going even when it's hard. Yeah. I, oh, so much, <laughs> so much right there. That was, that was a whole meal y'all because it's so many gems that you put in there, even just in, in being an entrepreneur, you know, and it, it reminds me, this is just plugging it a little bit. It reminds me of your Birmingham TEDx talk where it's like, you know, changing from that. Okay. Now, you know, getting that imposter syndrome or getting out of your own way of knowing, okay, now this is what I do, right? So I'm just, I'm at home and I'm kind of spinning the wheels. Um, so that that's so huge because it is one of those things where when you're, before you're getting into it, people are like, yes, you go, you post about something. Yes, yes. But when, okay, now is this is full flesh. This is what I do. It's like, Where's and then suddenly they don't want to like okay so every entrepreneur can relate to this people will like and love and share these statuses and all this stuff when it's like i have this great idea i'm going to do this thing the minute it's for sale 
crickets. Ooh. And you're like, ooh, ooh. what happened to all the people who were supposed to be supporting me? Wow. Um, and this is what I always tell people, just don't forget, like, Wells Fargo does not take likes. I just want y'all to know that. So yes. You have to really put the time and energy into building something real that exists outside of social space, something mm -hmm. that exists that you validate it works in the world because as helpful as your friends are, as helpful as the people who are around you are, they they play a part as well, but you have to know what part and not yeah. build your business on, you know, the support that's there. But yeah, the TEDx talk was, is definitely the underlying theme of my life. <laughs> so it seems to come up in every conversation I think now that I've said that out loud. Um, because it's just kind of a truth. Not enough people say entrepreneurship is difficult. Not enough people say, you know, you're going to have some moments where you stress and you worry. You're going to want to quit a hundred times. We all kind of try to make it look perfect, right? We have this perfectionism thread within entrepreneurship where my Instagram feed has to be perfect. My posts have to be perfect. My graphics have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And people believe what you put out there. They believe that filtered slither of truth that you, you feed them on a regular basis. And that's okay to some extent. But I think that if you have personal conversations, if you meet a person, if they ask you what advice do you have, or if they ask you what challenges have you had, I think that there's a responsibility. We all have to be be very honest and open so that we can equip more people to make it all the way through. Right. Um, because it's not always the fact that they don't have the money or they don't have the talent or they don't have the resources. Sometimes they just don't have the mental state. And that's not always just their fault. No one has really helped them figure that part out. And that's not fair to them. It's not fair to the world because we all want their talents, but it's kind of a part of the journey and we just have to be more open about it. Yeah, definitely. I love that. You know what? I hope y'all are taking notes because again, I, I knew you were going to drop, drop a lot of gems in terms of just strategy, um, um, in terms of, you know, from business marketing, social media, all of that. And so that's really good. And of course, I'm, I want everybody to make sure that they check out your uh, TEDx talk. Um, I'm going to put that in the description. So y'all check that out. Um, so you, you mentioned some of it. You kind of kind of like an alley-oop. <clears throat> the next question is, like now in being in business now, so you're, you're the business woman, you're an entrepreneur, you're doing this full time. What are some of the day to day challenges or, or obstacles or hurdles in, in f being an entrepreneur, being in business full time? Two words, time management. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know, 2020 has definitely exposed all the weaknesses of time management. I already was not the best at time management, but ever since my whole family has lived within these walls um, all together all the time, and I have to actually cook. I think my stove is probably like, really, is this what we're doing? Because I have cooked <laughs> so much more. I've cooked more in the last maybe four or five months that I've probably cooked the entirety of my marriage. And y'all can judge me if you want to. I really don't care. My husband right. has not missed a meal he eats it's not always cooked you know but now you know the majority of the time it is and so now currently in today's current climate it has become exponentially harder um to manage time i have a four-year-old you know i do have a family that i want to feed i have a dog he likes to go outside sometimes um and i have my own you know physical health that i have to worry about being in the house all the time not getting enough sunlight not getting enough motion and that kind of thing and so to try to take all of that, none of which has anything to do with work, and then also do the work, you know, still talk to my team, still do all of that, it can become really, really difficult to prioritize and to keep things moving and not to put things that are not as important at the front of the list, um, trying to just check some stuff off. And so time management is a daily thing for me. I have multiple levels of things that I have to do to keep my mind focused. Um, some of them are just ceremonial at this point. Um, some of the just jotting down the list, some of the, you know, pause, how much have you gotten done just to make myself feel good enough to go on with the rest of the day. Right. Like some of it's just, hey, you're doing it, you know, cheering myself on just so I can keep it moving. But time management is so important. And as a person who works in digital world, time management is kind of important for my clients as well. Mm -hmm. And so the things that I do for them require that they do something for me. And I have to ask them to get it done at a certain time so I can fit it into what I'm doing. And because things change so much, it's really hard. Um, when, when all of the coronavirus stuff started happening, 
one of the things that really pissed me off, if I can be really honest, it really pissed me off because a lot of people were like, oh, I have so much time on my hands. Me, as a person who does a lot of social media management and had to relay a lot of changes for big organizations or like churches and stuff like that, they're like, oh, we're closed. No Bible study. Yes, we are having Bible study. Or, you know, people say, oh, our office is closed. Oh, everything is virtual. Because those changes were happening so fast, there was no real rhythm to my life, like at all for a solid month, it felt like just too many changes too quickly. And so that was the point where I had to pause and go, okay, I know the world is on fire, but in order for you not to just like fire all your clients and say, I am done with you at a time that is very unnecessary, you need to pause and figure out what are the heavy duty time management things that you can do. You know, it used to be three to five days, maybe it's more like three, five hours at this point, but how can you try to rebuild a better time management system even when everything is moving extremely quickly so that's my day-to-day obstacle um but i definitely work on it regularly as much as i can yeah and and that's one of those things i think if i think if any business owner entrepreneur no matter how long they've been in it i think if we are to be honest with ourselves i think everybody can put that at least as one on the list time management so when you said two words (laughs) I had the two words in my head. I would have been surprised if you said anything else. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's definitely one of those where it's it's that constant, um, I'm not going to say balancing act as much as I would say ordering act because when a lot of times you say balance and people- Yeah, balance is a myth. Think it's gonna be, exactly. They think it's going to be, oh, it's perfect. No. Yeah, I, you know, so I say harder. just more so ordering, prioritizing, you know, instead of balancing because, you know- the, the home life balance, the work life balance. Yeah, that's not a real thing. And I think that, you know, I think it's important that we say stuff like home life balance sounds really catchy. That's why it's popular, not because it actually exists. Um, and I just, not to say that you can't find a balance in life or something that you're comfortable with. That's true, but there is no perfect way to do that. And I think that, like you said, that's where people kind of get caught up in the way it sounds. And I think that it's it's more about how we wrap our minds around being comfortable with saying, I'm not doing work right now. That's the real core issue is that as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as people who are, you know, doing anything, even if you're working full time and you have a business that you're doing part time, whatever the case is, you have to, to learn to be okay saying, I'm not doing work right now because there becomes this ton of guilt as a parent, as a spouse, as a friend, even, you know, as a daughter or son, mm-hmm. where you feel like, oh, well, you know, I'm neglecting them and you feel bad. And then when you turn around and you spend time with them, you feel bad for neglecting the work. At some point, the only way you find this balance that people swear exists is that you become comfortable with saying, I'm not working right now. I'm not taking any calls. I'm not going to read my email this weekend. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just put up this wall to exist for the people that I've let in. I'm going to take care of myself. And then when I get back to it, I'll be fully ready to get back to it. But it's not necessarily about balance. And sometimes you just have to cut that side and let it go for a minute and just focus in this one place. And that's okay. Um, And no one should tell you that it's not because it is. And especially if you're an entrepreneur, you get to do what you want to do. So who's who's going to check you? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Period. (laughs) Right. So, yeah. And that's, that's one of those things where I think also just, starting out is one of the biggest things to knowing that, okay, listen, I know that I have to build this thing and work, but there are times when your body is telling you, hey, you need to focus on this and you need to let this go, you know, and just, I think that's, because that's the important part too, of just keeping yourself full, fully functioning, you know, uh, (laughs) being healthy. And I get it. I swear I get it. I never want to appear, um, anytime I'm talking about entrepreneur life, I never want to appear like, oh, well, you've been in business this long. You know, you have a team. It's easier for you. Okay. I didn't always have a team. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't always have a child. Like I didn't always have the same things at play. And I know that we get caught up in the money side of it. It's like, hey, trust me, I live by if I don't work, I don't eat. Right. Because this is not, I don't get paid vacations over here. I just want y'all to know that. Do I still get paid? Yes. Why? Because I'm likely working. (laughs) Because that's just kind of, but again, being in the digital marketing world, I kind of signed up for that in some respect. Um, But 
I understand that we have this thought that if I don't do as much as I can, I won't make as much money, I won't go as far. And I'm here to tell you that is just not true. The things that are there for you will be there for you. Your mm -hmm. job is to be in a healthy enough space and a prepared enough space to take full advantage of the opportunities that come your way. That does not come by gathering everything up. It comes by just kind of like, you know, strength and conditioning. You just have to be ready, prepared, get your systems working. Because right. then if you get the big client or you get the big project or you get the big order, you can handle it as opposed to, oh no, I have a hundred million small clients. I can't take on this golden opportunity that's going to transition my business. So yes, it's about making money, but if you feel like you're running yourself ragged and you're, you know, just so you can make the money you want to make, you're not charging enough. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that for you right now. Take your price up mm -hmm. and then you'll have less clients still make your money and then you get the time that you need to really focus on your business and that's something i've had to learn and to even to this day i still have to focus on that in itself how are you making sure that you are taking enough time for yourself for your business to actually grow if that's what you desire to do and not just trying to chase the money because the money's going to be there somebody's going to give it to you the question is how much you're asking them for it and are you really in place to take advantage of those opportunities when they come Yes, man, gems, gems. I'm gonna go back and watch and watch and take my notes. <laughs> this is awesome. So, in contrast to um, just the challenges getting started and now the day to day, let's you know. In contrast to that, what is one of the most, or mo it could be multiple things. What is the most satisfying part of being a business owner, being an entrepreneur, in in this? You know, you're day to day that thing that just makes it worth it what is what is that satisfaction for you you know um i think the satisfaction for me has become the flexibility of my life um that's that's something that again given today's client cu current climate i've had to really be grateful for is that that you're not doing anything all day I could be not doing anything all day if I chose to. And that flexibility is something that I'm super grateful for since I have a four-year-old son now. Um, he's finally at the point where he's learning his sight words, which is what I hope he is doing right now at this moment. Um, but he's finally at that place where, you know, he's a little bit old enough to kind of be by himself for a little while, but then he's not. And so when all the school stuff started closing and all that kind of stuff started happening, I needed to be in a position to be able to be there with him until we figured that out, be able to take half days or only work half days or work in the middle of the night if I needed to, or four o'clock in the morning if I needed to. And I had that flexibility, you know, being an entrepreneur. And that's something that some people's jobs will allow them to do, which is great. My husband's job is like that. Um, he's, he's super flexible. He works at home. He's here every day, you know, with us. And so that's great that he's in that position, but I know that's not a lot of people's situation. And so it's one of the things that I've come to love about my life is the level of flexibility. I always tell people, you know, they're like, oh, well, I would invite you to so-and-so. I'm like, I just need Wi-Fi. Anywhere there's Wi-Fi, I can do my work. Right. Um, and that's something that I've come to absolutely love about my life. Um, the other is that in a similar lane um, is that I get to go to Target in the middle of the day. Now, I don't do that anymore <laughs> because you know, I don't really get down with germs like that. But <laughs> right. ever since the germs, you know, became more apparent, I've not been in there as much. Um, but the other thing that's really important to me is I get a chance to help people in my, my particular industry. I get to help people see their dreams come true. And that's something that I'm very passionate about. It's tied to my biggest struggle of pricing. I'm always afraid to change prices because I'm like, oh, but the people I really want to help, they don't have the budget for that. Like they don't have the resources. They're just getting started or they're in underserved communities, that kind of thing. And so I have a real passion for people seeing their dreams come true to a fault even. Um, and But I get a chance to do that. I get a chance to do things like this. I get a chance to facilitate programs. I get a chance to do lunch and learns. Basically where I get to just give away the game, where I get to meet people in their early stages when they're trying to figure it out themselves. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a lot of happy. It's very self-serving, but this is the concept of if you do things for yourself, then the whole world is helped. People are always like, I can't do stuff for myself. Trust me, if, you, if your happiness aligns with the happiness of the people around you, one, you have the right people around you, you have the right clients, you have the right spouse, you have the right people there if making you happy 
spills over to them naturally. And that's the thing that I really, really love. I get a chance to do what I love, do what makes me happy, and it helps a bunch of other people almost immediately. It's almost instant gratification. Sometimes, other times, not so much. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that makes me super happy. It's one of my favorite things about, about entrepreneur life for me. I love that. And I, that's one of the things that I think across the board I hear with all the interviews that I do and just networking and talking. It's, it's a true, genuine passion to help people. You know, um, you, know you, choose, you choose to be in a certain lane, but when you can help people, do things, you know, do what they're doing in their lane is just so awesome. And that's, that's just, you know, satisfying as, as well as gratifying. So I love that. So you dropped so many gems already, but if you were to give a few maybe helpful tips or that thing or a few items, what would be something that you would tell that person right now watching this interview who's either thinking about getting into business entrepreneurship or they're just starting out what is some advice that you would give someone that's entering the lane of business and entrepreneurship so first if you can hear my four-year-old i am so sorry <laughs> um he always gives a very interesting soundtrack to the things i'm doing um but I would say my advice to anyone who is starting is kind of two sides of the same coin. One, just do it. Like, I don't, don't let perfection paralyze you from just going forward. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely, it's that concept of, um, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take kind of thing. And I know that as the person who struggles with perfectionism, it's very easy to not do anything until it's just the way you want it. And that's another myth of this life in general, perfect, perfect is not a real thing. We don't, we don't get perfection is not, we don't do that, right? Unless you're taking a test that already has exact answers on the other side, there is no way for you to create a perfect life. So waiting for that is, is simply paralysis. So just go for it. Um, on the other side of that coin, this is gonna sound real, real mean, you're going to fail. Hear me out. It is okay to fail. <laughs> Failure is, a natural part of life. It's not about not failing. That's not really what you're trying to accomplish. It's about becoming comfortable enough with failure to find the lessons, to figure out which way to go for, which direction to change, to be open to evolution, to be open to, you know, switching lanes. And a lot of times we get so married to this perfect thing that we're trying to accomplish from the beginning that when a failure happens, it just, it takes all the life out of what we're doing. And we're unable to see that that failure was like a red flag to say, hey, you shouldn't be going right, you should be going left. And so we don't see that change and we lead ourselves to failure after failure after failure. And so I'm letting you know now, you will fail. It's not designed to all work perfectly. It's not designed for win after win after win. Yes, all you see on social media, I know in my life, it's like, oh, she won. Oh, she got this award. She did this. That's wonderful. There are so many things in between. The right. award. There are so many no's in between the yeses. And I've become really comfortable with that because at least if I'm having the conversation, that's a win for me. If I send the proposal, that's a win for me. If I took the price up and I sent the proposal and they didn't send me back, you must be out of your mind. I'm like, I won. You know, and so you have to become comfortable with what your definition of success is and what failures that you might see along the way. And that's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to, to do that. What's not okay is to stop trying. And so I don't want you, you know, to think that, oh, I'm going to do this for myself and my own boss, you know, I'm going to do this. And so that means I'm always going to win. That's just not true. And I don't want people to be hurt by that. That's, I don't want you to be because a lot of people are, um, a lot of people you're like, oh, so-and-so was doing so good and they just disappeared. And that's why, because they weren't ready for failure. They didn't expect failure. Or once they got so far, they were like, I'm not going to fail again. And that's just not true. Mm -hmm. So go for it. And yes, you're going to fail. Um, and all of that is completely okay. And I could give you a bunch of technical stuff to do. It's not really who I am, but you know, do get your books together, get an accountant, <laughs> right. get a lawyer, you know, ask the question. Know your numbers. <laughs> invest in your business. If you don't do something well, somebody else who that's what they do with their life, they'll take money and give you that knowledge. That's kind of how that works. And so you have to be willing to invest in yourself, especially before you expect someone else to invest mm. in you. 
if you won't spend the money for an hour consultation with a lawyer or an accountant, but you want to get online and try to sell something, I want you to see that the same way. Right. You didn't invest in you, so why should I? And I may not know that you didn't do that. I know you're like, well, how do they know if I invested in myself? But maybe it's just a matter of how you handle the business. If you don't have a contract, I figure you didn't talk to a lawyer. If you, you know, if you say, well, you know, you can just send it to my Gmail, I'll say, okay, well, you haven't taken maybe the time to go through the URL process or mm -hmm. whatever. So just take time, energy, money, invest in yourself. Um, and just remember that the investment in you is often a reflection um, of the investment in yourself. The way people will spend with you, the, the way people will invest in you with time and, and money is usually a reflection of how much you've done for yourself. So if you haven't done it, no surprise if they other people don't do it. Um, so I think that would be my advice to people. I hope it's helpful. I love that. that that's, a, that's a condensed um, getting started in business for dummies book right there. <laughs> <laughs> because like you said, it's you know, it's two sided what you said. And I love that because it's almost like what people would uh, perceive as a positive and a negative, which I don't right? or right. a business owner or entrepreneur would look at that and say, Oh my God, yes, that is true. But someone may see it as that. But again, it's important to realize, Hey, there, you may have some setbacks, you know, you may have some hurdles that you just feel like, Oh, I knocked that. That, that was horrible. You know, I failed, but with hearing someone say that to say, listen, that's not a stopping point. That's just something that now right. you learn, you learn how, okay, now I'm, I know that I had that lesson. Now I know how to, uh, you know, conduct myself moving forward. And you know, for the people who really don't believe me, let's talk about parallels of life just real quick. So Mike, right. When you are training and you are pushing to be able to hold more weight, likely you're going to run into muscle failure at some point, oh, right? Yes. If it's heavier than you can handle, it's not something that you've been doing, you're trying to press that, you're going to have some muscle, muscle failure. And that's the point that you know is like, okay, I've reached my limit, and now I need to build strength for this limit. That's exactly how it works in entrepreneur mm -hmm. life. You're going to hit, you know, a, we're not going to call it entrepreneur failure, but you're going to hit a failure point. But that's kind of, that's your opportunity to say, all right, I need to strengthen this area. I need to be able to carry this much weight. I need to be able to send this kind of proposal. I need to be able to handle this, this large order or whatever it is. So that next time I get ready to push it up, next time I get ready to do it, I can handle it. I may still buckle a little bit, right? but I'm going to hold it, right? I may not push it up, but I'm going to get it off the bar. And so that's really what you're doing with failure. It works the same way in your body. It works the same way in your life, in your marriage. It works the same mm -hmm. way everywhere. It's a parallel of life. Failure is not designed to make you quit. It's designed to let you know where you have a weakness so that you can strengthen and move forward. And that's it. If you can accept that in life, you're unstoppable. Oh, I love it. I love it. Climbing hills and conquering plateaus. <laughs> because last night when I was bench pressing, <laughs> I sat up and I said the selfie to my cousin. I was like this in the camera. I said, bro, it's going to be a while before I get back to that level. Because again, you, and here's the thing too, people don't realize the importance of consistency. Because what I heard oh. in that is consistency, right? Hallelujah. And so guess what? We've been quarantined. I haven't been in the gym. So, you know, hitting those weights is like, whoa, I made a post a few weeks ago uh, when I first went back and uh, <laughs> to the gym. And I said, listen, if you haven't been in a while, take some of those weights off, big fella. Right. <laughs> you ain't impressing nobody. And so <laughs> it's one of those things where you think about it. I love that analogy you use because it's not, I'm not going to leave and say, you know what? I'm just never going to work out again. You know, all you my know, health, my health ain't so that important. Of us do. So yeah. many of us do though. Like, you know, we think about how missing a couple workouts turns into like, I haven't worked out all year, you know, mm -hmm. and, and your coach, your trainer is always saying, Hey, but keep going back. Right. Even right. if you only go 10 minutes, just go do something so that you can start make, even if, cause there's just levels of it. And I swear it's the exact same thing. There's yes. levels to the, the, Consistency. You may not be able to push the same weight, but if you can just get yourself back in the mindset of I go to the gym regularly, that's an obstacle all by mm -hmm. itself. And so, so you do true. have to be consistent. And so I think that that's 
you know, it's, it's the, the tangible proof that people need about this life, you know, in small business, in entrepreneurship. We often have a hard time wrapping our brain around the idea of it. And yeah. sometimes I just have to say, hey, it's the same thing that happens with your body. So if you're like, man, I've been out of shape for 20 years because I go a little while, then I stop. Your business could be the same way. Mm -hmm. If you give it a little bit of energy and then you stop, and then you give it a little bit of energy and then you stop. Of course, after 20 years, you don't see a lot of progress because your body, your business hasn't had a chance to really build up the strength that it needs. It works the same way. And that's, again, I always have to make these disclaimers to say, this is not the same to say, I was going super hard at the top of the month, but now I'm going real slow. If you're still going, then you're being consistent. You don't have to have your foot down, you know, gas, 120 on the dash all the time. That is not a real thing. I know it looks like, you know, I be going hard. I do go hard, but my heart is not, it's in levels just like everybody else's. I have certain weeks where I'm on top of it. I'm writing all the stuff. I'm sending all the stuff. And the next week I'm like, man, I'm about to watch this whole season of living single and do nothing, <laughs> Right. you know, and just do the basic minimum, but I don't stop doing anything. Um, I just may not be going, you know, hard eight straight hours. And I'm okay with that. I, but I have to learn how to be okay with that. Like, please know, I used to feel like I was failing. Like, oh my God, yeah. I, was not, I didn't get as much done as I did last week comparing myself to last week's Jackie. You know, this week's Jackie is lazy compared to her. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, all I got is today, Jackie. What you got for me today? You know, who, who are you going to be today? Are you, are you productive, Jackie? Or are you ice cream and living single? I just need to know <laughs> right. so I can get my mind ready. <laughs> and whoever you are today, I welcome you, get done what you can get done, be in the mental space where you can show up tomorrow. That's all I'm asking of myself daily. And if we can get that way, where we are consistent and we are taking those failures as opportunities, then we all succeed. Oh, I need my little plug-in soundboard so I can do the applause. Oh, you know? <laughs> that, yes, I, I just, just, oh, resonates so much because it's so true. Um, you know, it's that constant misconception that you have to be always on. No, you have to be always moving and, and right. doing something and, and finding that consistency. Oh, so good. So what's next for Jackie Jones One Degree Marketing? What's next? What's on the horizon? What's coming up? What is, wh where do you see yourself going with entrepreneurship in, in your business? So <laughs> I'm going to fight the urge to make a joke here and be like, I wish I knew. Um, but, you know, right now there are a couple things, right? So I am very happy with where I am in life as a business owner. Um, and what I mean by that is that having the opportunity to do things like this and being on panels and stuff like that is really, really great for visibility for me. And I've been very fortunate in the last year or two to elevate that visibility and that's great. And I'm happy with it. Um, the one thing that I'm currently working on is increased visibility for my company, which is not the same as invisibility for Jackie. Right. Um, and so my focus is kind of there, which I have really great things going on for my clients that I have as retainer clients. Um, however, the one thing that I have been working on is kind of a passion project for a long time is Elevation Academy becoming a subscription based platform where I can just load in lots of resources and marketing things and platform help and social media help and email help and web help and all of that stuff where people can get it at a very, very low cost and get the tools that they really need. Because that's really my whole purpose um, is to make sure that people get what they need, where they are with whatever budget they have. And so I'm trying to get that down as much as I can to be able to say, hey, if you pay this subscription monthly, you can have access to all this stuff. I have no problem with you knowing how to use every tool that I use. Um, that's only going to help you. And at some point, if you do it well, you'll be back to see me because it's time consuming as crap to do what I do. And so I always tell people, I don't necessarily sell marketing, I sell time. And if you're doing well you know, with these things, then at some point you're gonna run out of time because you're gonna have to do your actual job and not your marketing. And so I've been working really hard on that. It, it has its ups and downs, like we just talked about of me like getting content ready and all that. But I definitely have decided to take my own advice um, and not wait till it's perfect. So that'll probably be out in August. Oh my God, I just said it out loud. So, <laughs> no, right. so you threw it out there. <laughs> like internally, I was like, don't you say that. It's like, mm. don't say it. <laughs> um, so in August, 
of 2020, um, Elevation Academy will be a subscription-based platform. And basically, it's just real simple. You know, you're a member. You get access to all the things. I'll be there to support people kind of as a group, to answer questions, to do all those things that all the businesses need anyway. Um, but without having, you know, people feeling like they have to pawn furniture to be able to afford it in, in the early stages. And so that's next. Um, outside of that, I don't, I don't know that there's much else. I'm just over here trying to survive 2020 like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I shared a meme yesterday. There was this young man. He's just on the side of the road. I guess, you know, it looks like a very remote like road and I guess he couldn't hold it. He's using the restroom on the side of the road and a truck comes driving by and a big boulder just bounces off the back of the truck off the ground and right on top of his car and just crushes it. And so he's just standing there looking. And I was like, oh, I, I, my caption was what in the 2020 just happened? I, I promise you 2020 <laughs> is, you know, I think it's so funny because I, I feel like 2020 is really just like being real petty with us. Oh man. Just because You know, everybody was like 2020 vision and they have yeah. all this stuff around vision. I'm like, but nobody saw this though. Um, of all yes. this 2020 vision that was like floating around. Nobody saw all this crap coming. Um, it's been a very challenging year. Um, and I do hope for anyone who is watching this in 2020 um, that you just kind of keep your mind together. Um, your health is way more important than anything on all levels. Um, business comes and goes, unfortunately, um, but it is not what keeps us alive, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, I really hope that the people are taking the opportunity to, to prioritize themselves and their families um, kind of not over but again if you're if you're serving yourself if everything around you is happy and healthy internally and that means with your family internally then usually the things that are outside of that like your business um like like the projects that you have going on or whatever they usually are doing will do well also but right now there is kind of a real focus on who we are as people um what we do with that information and as parents you know send kids back to school or not who knows, right. <laughs> um, who knows what that's going to do exactly uh, you know, just take care of yourself. Please, please, please do. Because 2020 don't care none about your feelings. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So true. So, Jackie, thank you so much. Uh, tell everybody how they can find you. Tell everybody how to reach you and, and see all the amazing things that you have going on. Well, if you're looking for the business, everything is one degree MMM like make more money. No, that's not what it stands for, but you'll remember it. That's right. One degree. MMM. <laughs> so Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything is one degree MMM. Um, if you're looking for me as a person, um, everything is the Jackie Jones, T-H-E, Jackie Jones. Uh, Jackie is J-A-C-Q-U-I. I feel sure that the spelling is probably around here somewhere down below. <laughs> yes, it I, will Somewhere be. <laughs> the correct spelling of my name will exist. Um, but it's the Jackie Jones on Instagram, on Twitter, um, Jackie Jones official on Facebook and Jacqueline Jones official on LinkedIn because I have to use my government name. There you go, man. Listen, Jackie, thank you so much. Uh, you are amazing. I, I was so excited when uh, you agreed to do this because not only did I want people to know more about you and your business, but I wanted people to feel your energy. There are certain people out there that I think are, you know, the light bearers where they just bring light to situations, but there are also people who are energy bearers. And I feel I'm one of those people in every interaction I've had with you, whether it was in public or uh, a networking event online, virtually, whatever it is, I feel that you're one of those people too, where it's just energy. You feel the energy. So thank you so much for doing this. And I certainly appreciate Abby. it. Yeah, definitely. You um, keep on keeping on because, you know, you. we're not going to end this without me saying you are doing an amazing job. Um, I always am so happy to see your face pop up in my social media feed because I know I'm about to get some good positivity in my life. So I really, really appreciate you having me, but I really appreciate the fact that you're doing this um, and all the things you do. So great to know you. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate it. And thank you again to everybody who uh, has tuned in to all the episodes. Uh, make sure you check out the information in the description uh, to see Jackie Jones and her business and how to get in contact with her. And as always, thank you. Like, share, subscribe, and tune in next time for another episode of Black Business Booming. Peace. <laughs>